What's going on everybody? My name is Trinell and welcome back to a weekly gaming news show. I am here with my good friend Todd, aka Up Jump the Boogie. Hey! Yeah, it always trips me out. Up Jump the Boogie. It just goes together so well. And um, yeah, so we're back. Episode 9. And uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Um, a lot to talk about involving Nintendo. And Nintendo has been very popular on this podcast <laughs> as of late, you know, with all of their mishaps <laughs> uh so we're going to be talking about nintendo um but first i want to get into some corrections and updates from our previous episodes so uh first on the list um we have uh, announcement from quakecon that we missed out on dishonored 2 was also announced at quakecon but that was also announced at e3 as well so it you know it, it, it was already like known i right. think they, they showed the the first trailer at e3 as well yeah, but just to cross our cross our T's and dot our I's, you know, they did announce it again at QuakeCon. Mm -hmm. um, some people may be yelling at us because we didn't mention it, but yeah, Dishonored Two was also uh, announced. Um, is, did you play the original Dishonored? And is Dishonored I did. something you might get? Um, I did play the original. I didn't get through the entire game. Uh, I'm not really big on like stealth games, even though. Dishonored has some of the best stealth um, in a in a, like a first person like like type game that I've right. ever seen before. Um, you know, plenty of powers to to to, to switch from, and uh, lots of ways to traverse the same area. So you can get to one point in the game like a multitude of different ways. And I thought that was really cool about it. It's just it was just one of those games that came out during the time where I was also playing other games and other games were coming out. So right. I didn't get a chance to finish it. Uh, I, I may pick up the next one. I'm not um, entirely sure if I'm just going to have the time. There's just so many games that I'm looking forward to. Right. <laughs> yeah, like, just, it's Just it's to real. tack another one on the list. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm around in the same boat. There, It was out. I was always interested in it. I just, I never got around to playing it. Um, you know, maybe the second one, I'm, I might give a chance. Uh, I, I know they released, uh, I think they released a uh, remastered version. On mm -hmm. the current gen system, so yeah, it, it good a good deal. I can get my hands on it. I might I might give it a, a spin, but it's not something I'm overly interested in or excited yeah. about. Yeah, that's not something that I like. Oh, I, I need this. Like, but um, if I if I do get a chance, I get some spare time. It may be something that I pick up just because I know that it's going to be good. Right. And our our second correction is that it was actually more of an update. And uh, this is something that has been, what, eight weeks in the making? Yeah, since, since the first week, right? <laughs> since the first episode, yeah. we've been wondering what the PSVR is like. Right. So finally, we, we have the, the update. Yeah, <laughs> let's, so, let's hear it. How, so how, how I, terrible is it? I, I took a crowbar <laughs> into my schedule and fit, fit myself into the best. I, I had one a couple of times, and the first few times I went, I mean, I couldn't wait. I mean, it's like five to ten minutes session, mm -hmm. and the line was ten to twenty people deep, and I'm like, yeah, no yeah. chance. Um, I went, I was at Best Buy today, and uh, I was actually there to buy um, a mounting kit, something innocuous, and the system was set up, and there was one kid sitting in there, and that's it. So I said, hey, oh, wow. might as well give it a chance. Um, I got to play Valkyrie, which it looks okay. beautiful. It's a good game. Um, it's an interesting game. It's a good game I would play without VR. I think, um, but I wasn't overly impressed. Um, outside of some nice visuals, you know, you look up, you look down, you look left and right, you got a very detailed cockpit, you see what's going on around you, it's cool. It's just a plain first person uh, shooter. Mm -hmm. I, I just, it's, it's nothing that I felt VR added to it that made me say, this is what I want to be using. I, I mean, well, yeah, and definitely the, these these this first wave of games, or you know these these uh, demos, like actually are are gonna be low bar. Like you're not right. you're not gonna like get like oh wow this is what VR is. I need this. Like the, they they're not gonna sell you. You know, especially if you're not if you're not already sold on it. I don't think these games are gonna sell yeah, you. They, if if you've never if you're not interested in VR or you're just trying to figure out what it is, I, I didn't think that game was a great indication of what mm -hmm. what's possible with VR. Um, I, I do know that Sony does need the PlayStation Neo. 
Um, so the, the resolution in the VR isn't that great. You get like a screen door effect. Or think of this, if you remember pre-HD, when you walked up close to your old 480 TV and you saw the lines, that like screen mm -hmm. door type effect, you can kind of see that, especially when the motion gets kind of fast. Seemed like I had a hard time keeping up. Um, I mean, you can get past that. It's not absolutely noticeable, but it may bother some people. Um, it bothered me a little bit. And okay. once I got into the, and it was just when it started. Once I got into the action, it kind of, I guess I got used to it. Or I ignored it. I just started playing. So um, th there's that. Um, but I, I do think that the PSVR definitely needs a power boost. Um, as it yeah. is now, it's usable and it, it's cool. Um, my worry is that with VR being commercialized so fast with the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive and the Google Cardboards and the Samsung deal, the Samsung <laughs> Cardboard. VR. That sounds like and, a terrible name. And uh, PSVR has been commercialized so much. These companies are going to be demanding two turn profits. And uh, my worry is they're going to shoehorn VR on any and everything out there. And once people start having bad VR experiences, VR is going to go the way of the Dodo. It's going to go the way of uh, Nintendo VR. Remember that? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. What was that? The the Virtual Boy. Yeah, the Virtual Boy. That's right. Yeah. God yeah. dang. That's yeah. Whew, That's taking it back. <laughs> that's a, that, was a, that was a classic Nintendo mistake right there. <laughs> yeah. It, it, only takes, it only takes one or two bad experiences, and people are not going to want it. My concern is, and it's already happening, where people are just... Uh, developers, and that, uh, it's not necessarily developers, um, it's, I would say it's the publishers more pushing developers, but they're shoehorning games into VR mm -hmm. that shouldn't be. Yeah, I, and you know what, I think as far as consoles are concerned, they are not necessarily ready for the current gen, which is, which may be a reason why we're getting these, like, point fives of, right. you know, the existing uh, hardware, is to make up for what they lack in terms of providing um you know a solid vr experience that, exactly. could, that could that could be that could, i mean that sounds like a legitimate uh, reason right yeah. right there you know because v vr has been you know commercialized and promoted for a while now right before and there was even hardware right before the you even had the the hardware for it so consoles are definitely playing catch up as far as uh, vr is concerned right and they are hoping that people that want vr will also get these new consoles you know because right. you i mean honestly you got to have money to to be doing either one so right. so, <laughs> so. <laughs> the, the thing is it console wise if you do vr on the console it's the cheapest it's the cheapest avenue pr ps vr um well there's what 35 million PlayStations out there, so it's the cheapest way for you to get into a VR. Because if you go with Oculus or HTC Vive, you got to get their systems, which are each about eight hundred dollars. Right. Plus, you have to have a PC that's able to run it. And to get medium specs for a PC to run them, you're looking at about twenty five uh, twenty five hundred dollar rig. Whoa. So it's not cheap. <laughs> It's definitely not cheap. Wow, my 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 rig costs eleven hundred bucks. Like, and right. this was like five years, like almost five years, five years, yeah. probably like four or five years ago. Yeah. So I mean, it they they do definitely call for quite a bit of power, and I Ooh. I agree that uh, Neo and and um, Xbox Scorpio are a reach for that that particular market yeah I, I feel like you're gonna get it even if you think they're pushing vr right uh hard right now for consoles it's going to be pushed even harder once the new uh consoles um are released right like because because you know they they want it you know you can tell that they want it and they're trying to implement it it's not really there and once these new consoles comes i was like okay we have the power let's let's push it right and uh, we'll you know they'll we'll just see how consumers um you know take it but i really i really don't i really don't think that there is you know they have the capabilities of providing a, a solid experience as it stands as, as it stands yeah i i agree and uh, again I, I will say this the, my first impression of psvr is cool mm -hmm. um is definitely at least with what i played is not reaching its potential um, the, the game I play, Valkyrie, is a beautiful game. Um, the controls are a bit wonky. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a flight game. I, and it's just based. I, I typically, uh, when I play like a flight, any game that has any type of flight simulation, I, I like to be able to uh, customize my stick. I wasn't able to. So uh, that, yeah. that's 
that's probably just because it's a demo. I can't yeah, these these are, these are these are glorified demos. These right. uh, these uh, games that you can play there. And it's, you said it was only one person in line. So why weren't you able to play a a, a second game? They, they wouldn't a, let you. At a time crunch. Oh, oh you, you had to get up out of there. <laughs> yeah, he's doing this on your spare time. Okay, yeah, I get if you. I if I could if I if I could have I would have tried to play them all, because um, there was nobody behind me. Right. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I just had to go. Yeah. Okay. So we'll have to wait and see uh, on VR. And if you get a chance to play any of the other games, um, you could just update us again. Let us know what you think about it. And um, hopefully, when the um, Neo comes out or the Scorpio, do you plan on getting a VR? Like, what are your what are your what are your plans on VR? I want to I want to see more. I, I need to see a killer app. You okay. Know? Um, you know, I jumped in, and the last time I jumped in face first into something like that was our is the Connect. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't buy me personally. I didn't get the Connect because I wanted the motion controls. I got the Connect because I wanted the voice controls. Which right. Yeah. I, well, I I didn't even want to connect. It was kind of just like shoved down my throat. So, <laughs> yeah. so a little I, bit of a difference there. Yeah, I had the original connect on the 360, and I, you know I got. Oh it. hell no. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> got it for the Xbox One, but I personally wanted the voice control. It, it suits me fine. It suits me perfect because when I come down into my little cave down here and I relax, I'm on the couch and I'm watching Netflix or I'm watching ball games or something. I love being able to say just, hey, Xbox, watch NFL Red Zone, Xbox, go to Netflix, and it works. It does work. If, so, you're, not, if you're not wearing headphones, sorry, we just turned your Xbox on, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, that no. happens. Not anymore, because if you got the update, shit. Oh, well, yeah, well, because yeah. of the update. I remember watching a commercial, <laughs> and uh, the guy's an Xbox, blah, 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 and it, it freaking turned my crap on, and I was yep. like, are you serious? <laughs> stream I, I that happened to me watching uh, one of the e3 streams that was funny yeah but but yeah you already know how i feel about vr i have absolutely no plans on picking it up whatsoever it's yeah. it's all about this thing right here man this freaking control pad just this all i need right here controller and a nice tv good i'm in there <laughs> yeah. Once, once they get you that that uh, Pokemon VR and move. Oh, I'm in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Nintendo. That's that's never gonna happen. Nintendo will never do that. No. So, so it's nothing I gotta worry about. My wallet is safe. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and move into the weekly icebreaker. And in this episode, we're gonna be talking a little bit about fan games. So I kind of just want to get a sense of how you feel about them. So the question that we have for the week is: Have you played? any fan games before and what are your thoughts i'm gonna go first real okay quick. <laughs> real quick um, no and uh my i actively avoid fan games okay and it's not a knock on the fans it's uh what they're doing and what we'll go into because i have i'm pretty passionate about it. i have uh, uh sh my opinion is fairly strong okay about about fan games and and, and such so yeah no and I, I do actively avoid them okay i, I don't I don't deride the fans. I understand what they're doing. I understand where their hearts are, but yeah, no. Okay, well, I am an avid uh, fan game player. <laughs> uh, I've played, I've played many, many fan games. I was actually um, really heavy into the Sonic uh, modding scene, mm -hmm. and um, uh, we'll, we'll we'll go more deeper into it. But yeah, to answer the question, yes, I do play fan games. I'm an avid fan game player. And um, we're just gonna end it there for now, because uh, we're gonna we're gonna go deeper into this conversation as the episode goes on. There may so, be some yelling. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm getting a sense that we have opposing arguments here. I'm getting. I don't. I don't know. Maybe this is just something in the air. I don't know. I don't know. We, may, we, may, we may need to call uh, Yama the moderator. Yeah. We we may need a moderator or somebody. I don't know. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and move into the top stories for the week. And um, Boogie, I'm going to let you go ahead and take the reins on this one. Okay, our first story is about Sony. So more prominent gaming sites than us have been getting invitations. <laughs> to, <laughs> yeah. <'cause laughs> have been getting invitations for September 7th to the PlayStation Theater, which is on Times Square in New York, um, for the PlayStation meeting. Now, there has been no details of what this PlayStation meeting is. Um, is about but mm -hmm. rumors and there's, there's uh heavy evidence that they may be talking about the playstation neo i can't see anything else unless they got some kind of crazy vr 
Yeah, like this is on. it's either VR or the Neo. Like, right. it, there's really nothing else in the foreseeable future that they can announce that they have to have a secret meeting for. Right. So, so that that's coming. So we look out. I'm I'm looking forward to see what they see what they uh, have to say. Yeah. Um, I'm still PlayStation less. I've been actively pursuing one. I'll be having one sooner or later. You can just walk in a GameStop and buy it, man. Not for three hundred. <laughs> You're not trying to pay that full price. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Actively looking for a deal. <laughs> yeah, that, there we go. Th- thank you for fixing. It. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah, I do have a Sony PlayStation Four, and uh, I don't, I don't plan on upgrading when the Neo comes out. I'm just gonna stick with what I have. But uh, I, yeah, I'm definitely um, curious as to what this, uh, this meeting is gonna, um, what's gonna come, come from this meeting. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll we'll keep our eyes on it. Uh, we'll yep. we'll put updates on our on our page. So if you're yep. not following our page, follow us. And you know, as more information comes out, we'll report it to you. Yeah. So it, it by the time um we'll be, it'll be like three more episodes before we can actually report on what happens because it doesn't go down until September the seventh. But they did announce it, so we thought it was newsworthy to let you guys know that it's happening. And um, once the news comes out, we'll. Will be the ones to report it to you. So please so, yeah. be on the look, on the lookout for that. Something's happening. Yeah, something's going down. It's about to go down <laughs> in about four weeks. <laughs> okay, next on the list is uh, more Pokemon news, and uh, for once, it's not Pokemon Go. Like, I, I'm getting kind of, I'm getting kind of burnt out on that game. Honestly, it's not uh, a real game. True, <laughs> it's an app. The, the app, the Pokemon app. Um, there was some updates to it. Um, but I uh, I don't know. It's kind of just kind of just dying on me. Right. But um, this is um pertaining to Pokemon Sun and Moon, uh, the new games coming out for the Nintendo 3DS uh this November, and uh, a new trailer was released. And in the trailer, we got the the enemy squad, which is known as Team Skull. Kind of stupid name. I don't I don't like. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know. Like I I feel like since um. What was it? Uh, man, Ruby and Sapphire, like all of the teams have had some kind of meaning. Like well, you, like in one of the games that like, you had like Team Magma and Team Aqua and those teams were like both trying to like resurrect like the, the legendary. I don't know. It kind of pertained to the story. I don't know, really know what skulls have to do with like anything with the sun and the moon. Like, I don't well, know. It, it could have been, it could have had like Team Eclipse or something and that could have been like a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. I thought that would have been like a way better well, name for a team. They are on the island, right? They're on the island that's mm-hmm. ba- reportedly based off Hawaii, so it may have something uh, to do with may have something to do with native type uh, rituals yeah. or or native native lore. So, I mean, they may, like you said, previously the teams have always fit into some kind of um, game lore. I, I'm I'm assuming they're they fit them in as you learn more about it. Yeah, but. yeah, they're they're doing a lot of things that are just like specific to this region. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're probably you're probably right when it when it comes to that. But uh, yeah, that was the team. They were uh, revealed, and we got seven new Pokemon. Um, some of which are um, um, a Alo- um, the freaking Alola. region. Yeah, Alola, the region specific uh, versions of already existing Pokemon. Um, so first off, man, I don't even try to pronounce Pokemon names anymore. This stuff <laughs> is ridiculous. Like I'm more 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 low. Morlo, Morlo, Morlo. Mor- I don't even. It's a grass fairy type, and then you have what is this? Payukumuku. Payukumuku. Okay, so that's definitely Hawaiian. <laughs> um, wishy wishy washy. Yeah, that's easy. Wishy washy. Okay, wishy washy. Okay, and this this Pokemon is actually pretty unique because it's a uh, it's like a small like kind of like fish fish Pokemon, and its ability is to transform into a school of fish and um that's it's it's called the school form and it becomes like more powerful i'm guessing getting like better moves or Strong you know moves, yeah. yeah better stats and whatever so that's actually pretty cool and unique to this game um and it's something that's been happening in the anime but has not been you know properly translated into the games and i think this is the first um generation where we're going to get some of these forms that aren't you know mega evolution because there's more to you know pokemon than just mega evolution some have like unique forms just on their own right but it's only been in the anime and now they're bringing them over to the game so that's actually 
really cool. I'm looking forward to that. Um, we have a fighting type Pokemon um, named Simeon. It's a monkey, of course. And then he evolves into Monkey Zuma. And the funny story is that there was a petition that yeah. got uh, a large handful, a, a large amount of <laughs> of uh, signatures to name this Pokemon, or at least the evolved form, to name him Harambe. And if you don't know who Harambe is... <laughs> you, you've been um, living under a rock. <laughs> yeah, er, earlier this year, there was a kid that fell into a, a gorilla in, enclosement at a zoo. Mm -hmm. And that was the gorilla... Uh, Harambe, that was his name. They had to put the, the gorilla down. Yeah, they um, had to put him down because he was attacking the kid. And allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is a game show. We're not going to go into that. And uh, <laughs> and um, the petition was basically... Um, because there's been plenty of memes and it's like, oh, Harambe lives in us all. And it's just been... It's been pretty crazy. And um, the petition, the petition was basically like, "We want Harambe to live in our hearts forever. Please make this happen, Nintendo." And they got a, They got a hefty amount of signatures, but I, I doubt that's going to happen. When I saw the picture, I thought it was real. I was like, "Is this? Is this? Did they really name this Pokemon Harambe?" Like, I can't believe they did it. But no, there was a. It was a petition to have him uh, named Harambe, and then um, we have two uh, Alolan forms. Uh, the first one is for Marowak. Which is the evolved form of Cubone, and it turns him from I think I think Marowak is a, either a I think it's a ground type, and um, it turns him into a fire ghost type. So I will definitely be transporting. I don't know I don't know if if that works. I think you have to actually catch a Marowak in this region because right. if I yeah I think if I have one from a previous game and I bring him over, it's not going to change him. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to need to get me a Marowak. Uh, I never really trained one before in any of the previous games, but Fire Ghost type, uh, that's pretty baller, and I'm gonna I'm gonna need that. I mean, there are Fire Ghost Pokemon, but it's like that chandelier thing. I'm like, ah, that, that thing's stupid. I'm not gonna train a chandelier. Get out of here. <laughs> and then the last uh, Alolan form is for Meowth, and it turns him from a normal type to a dark type Pokemon, and he's like purple. <laughs> so, if you like your Meowth's purple, this is the one for you. My daughter likes purple. Oh no, there's one more. The Raichu. Oh yeah, the Raichu. Yeah. Yeah, right. Ra Raichu has a has a, a form specific to this region, and it turns him from an electric type Pokemon to an electric. Um, Psychic. No, he's an electric fairy. Electric and fairy type. That's what he is. Let's let's double check. <laughs> Electric Psychic. He looks like a fairy because he looks stupid. <laughs> yeah, with the, with the swirly ears. And yeah, the, the swirly ears and the like the, the crazy the, tail that he's surfing on. That he's surfing on, and then like the <laughs> the blue gumdrop eyes. Like he looks weird. I thought it was a fairy type just by looking at his face. Okay, <laughs> I stand corrected. No need to correct me in the comments. I was corrected on the show. Please do not make fun of me. Okay, so <laughs> Raichu will be an electric psychic type. Which is which is pretty cool. Uh, that's those are, that's a pretty good mix. I just won't use him because he looks stupid. <laughs> Sorry, I, I train cool Pokemon. That's it. <laughs> there's no better reason. No there's better yeah. Reason. There's no better reason. So that that's all the news that we have on the trailer that was uh, released. Um, you can go to our page on Facebook, and uh, the trailer will be there. We'll have it posted on our Facebook page. But with that, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next story. And um, Boogie, you can go ahead and take this one. Uh, something we talked about last week, No Man's yep. Sky, uh, the controversy and so on and so forth. The game right. actually did come out. Right, because uh, we talked about it before. It was pre-release, and now right. this is like, uh, how many days has it been since Post it came it out? It came out Tuesday, so what, four yeah. days? Four days. Yeah. Four days out. Four days and, out. And, and, and the old man. <laughs> PC version came out Friday. So the, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, the multiplayer, or like thereof. So. Yeah. The the uh, developer had been very very cryptic when people were asking about multiplayer, mm -hmm. um, and they said, "Well, it's possible, but you know the vast the vastness of this of the galaxy or the vastness of the game is highly unlikely to ever run into anybody." Well, I think on the first or the second day, there were two streamers that were playing, and they it, found, no, it was the, it was the first it was the first day. The first day, okay, yeah. first day, two streamers found themselves on the same planet. In the same place, um, they coordinated, and they couldn't see each other. 
So there is absolutely no multiplayer in this game. Right. Um, it would have been nice for the developer to specifically say, hey, there's no multiplayer. And they didn't. And, and also, uh, and this is because I was in London. <laughs> I was in London last week, so I got a lot of uh, European news. Apparently, uh -huh. on the European version of the game, on the back, they changed. They changed. So, you know, it has the age and, mm -hmm. and information. And so it used to be, um, I think it was like 13 and up. Um, was the game, okay. and it also had a, a little symbol that said online multiplayer. But <laughs> they put a sticker on top of it that took off the online multiplayer, and it said the game was for like seven and up, or something like that. So they lowered the age. So they, they basically changed the age rating and covered up the multiplayer, the online bit. Oh wow! So I, I mean, again, if your game Shameful. doesn't have if the game doesn't have multiplayer, just say it doesn't have multiplayer. There yeah. are plenty of successful games that don't have multiplayer. This game doesn't necessarily need multiplayer. It, I, it's, it's just the fact that it was perceived to have some type of multiplayer right. for this entire time during its development and the delays. And then launch, you find out that it doesn't. Like That's right. the worst way to find out something about a game. That's just disappointment. That's yeah. gamer tears. <laughs> Yeah, you're just asking for a bad time when you're just not up front with uh, with the, your fan base because a lot of people they were down for this game like mm -hmm. at the you know from Since the last year, from the, when yeah e from E3 came out that, right that was, that was the game of the show one of the games of the show one of the kinds of rewards and people were extremely excited about it and as it as it came down I mean the game was up here and it just until freaking and, face too, dive. Yeah, to be fair, the game is out, and there are plenty of people playing it, and there are plenty of people that love it. It's just right. the, the problem with it is if you deceive your your player base, they're never going to trust you. And if they don't trust you, they're going to stop playing your game. They're going to stop buying your games. Yeah, yeah, because as it stands, it's kind of more like a, like a resource-gathering right. exploration game than... <laughs> Like this, this entire like universal epic <laughs> the, adventure game. You know what the, I'm saying? The best description I heard about it mm -hmm. is that you play as the locust from Independence Day. You just go from planet to planet, taking all their resources. <laughs> 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 that had me cracking up when I heard that. Uh, oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I think it wasn't even so independent. I don't think it was a uh, a known review. I think it was right, like right. A review, but that when I read that, I, I, I was almost in tears. That was funny. Oh wow, that's that's a good way. So you're just taking all the resources from these like, you know, millions of planets, right. and apparently there is like an end to the. Well, there's yeah, there's no end to the game because like, supposedly the main objective is to reach the core of the universe or, or whatever, center, and yeah. yeah, the center of the universe. And then when you reach that, the game just like starts over. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thank you for nothing. Yeah, I, I, I honestly was very intrigued when I first saw it, mm -hmm. and as time went on, I was just less and less and less interested in it. So when it came down to like, okay, the game comes out in a couple of weeks, the game is coming out, I had no intentions on buying it. Right. Yeah. And and with this, uh, I, f I would have definitely wasted my money personally <laughs> if I would have bought this because this is not the kind of game that. I, I would want to play me, me either I, I, yeah and and um since I, i'm playstation list as we mentioned earlier i was yeah. planning to buy it for pc um and it came out on the 12th on friday i was still in london so um i was able to read about it before I, and yeah they screwed the pc players thank yeah. you very much it's, it's all kind of buggy crazy frame rate drops i mean people are running there have been complaints from people with normal old school uh uh, video graphics cards to people with the newest, latest, and greatest in SLI, two gigabyte GTX 980s, what have you. And they're getting frame drops. They're barely reaching 30 frames for 30 frames per second. That's oh man, that's absurd on a PC game. I, I mean, that's that's unacceptable in, in my opinion. Um, and and uh, they pushed it back. It was supposed originally supposed to release the same day, and they pushed yep. it back. But they only pushed it back three days, and obviously three days wasn't enough to fix was, the mess. Yeah. yeah, definitely wasn't enough time. Oh man, I mean, I guess if you're a PC player and you didn't actually pre-order it, you kind of dodged a bullet <laughs> because if you didn't buy it based on the perceptions of the PlayStation version, then you know you were good because if you would have got the PC version, you would have had 
an even less of a good time. So, yeah, I, I, this is this is, seems to me to be becoming a, a uh, epidemic with PC games. Oh, definitely. Yeah, they they release the game on console. It's nice. It's polished. And again, there's n- no console that's more powerful than a gaming PC. No, I mean. People that are serious and buying these games to play on their PC, they have serious gaming PCs. They don't have, they don't have an e machine, not a Best Buy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, for you to release a game and it performs worse on a PC than it does on a console, that's not the, that's that's hundred percent the developers. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, you can. You, there's no way that you could put that on the consumer or anything because right. if you optimize the game correctly it should run it should run on pc better than it runs on a console absolutely and it makes no sense it's, it, yeah it's that sad. just makes so that just makes so no sense yeah definitely definitely sad day for um for those guys i can't remember the, the the developer's name but yeah definitely a sad sad day for them i mean it can't be too bad i mean they got how many a lot of people bought the game no they sold a ton regardless they, yeah, they so. did sell a ton yeah but and, their reputation is definitely tarnished after this right they, they got a lot of work to do to fix it yeah and you know being being kind of like an independent studio that, that's going to be it's going to be really tough for them to to make a uh, you know a, a comeback and come you know come out with anything um as epic as this was supposed to be in the in the hearts and minds of people because yeah. they they you know the way they made their money was off of like little smaller like little smaller like indie titles right i mean they, they obviously sony threw money at them to get the game um, well, yeah. exclusive so they're going to need enough they're going to need more exclusive money so oh I'll, yeah definitely i would definitely. bet their next game be it whatever it is it's going to be exclusive to yeah. sony or microsoft or whoever or most likely sony cuz microsoft had it microsoft was like yeah like nah we we going to dodge that one <laughs> yeah no, well microsoft announced a while ago that they were going to really stop paying for exclusive games like that well, yeah, yeah, you see what they're doing with the, yeah. all of their games being released on PC anyway. So, so yeah, if so, you, you know, hopefully they're still in good graces with Sony and can get them to throw them another bone for yeah. their for their whatever their next project may be. I just, nah. I, I just mm-hmm. hope I just hope they do right by the PC players that brought their game because I mean, oh, yeah. you can't leave them in the lurch. Well, I mean, was it was it bought on Steam? Uh, Steam well, was it Steam? Okay. It's available on Steam and uh, what GOG. Okay, well, if you bought it on Steam, I'm pretty sure you were able to get a refund. Like Steam is um, is not um, about you know tarnishing their reputation. Right. So they'll they'll give you the refund. I think the way that their policy works right now is if you play under a certain amount of time with the game and you have like a legitimate complaint, okay. um, they'll they'll give you your money back with no problem. Good. Good. So yeah, I, I just hope they fix the game and because yeah. again. For what it is, and for the people that like to play, I think it's it's a good game, and it'd be good for the, the people that like that type of game. But uh, yeah, they just have some work to do. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And um, you can go ahead and take the next story as well. This uh, um, about Microsoft. Okay, so Microsoft is throwing his hat into the game video game streaming uh, arena here. Oh um, lord! <laughs> they just. They just announced, or they announced earlier this week, that they're acquiring a company called Beam. Um, the, if you are not familiar with it, which you probably aren't, because it's Never very new, they they just started this year. It's like January fifth okay. of this year that they started. Um, they showed off their technology at TechCrunch's uh, Disrupt. I think that was in March. Their working version, um, but basically it's like a Twitch stream, um, which you have now, um, but it adds some interactive um, features. So whereas in right now, you got your Twitch stream, you can chat with them. In Beam, the, your people, that, people that are in your chat room can actually um, interact with you in the game. So they can send you loadouts. So if you're playing Call of Duty, they can send you a loadout to use. Um, hmm. if, you're playing, if you're playing Street Fighter, they can pick your character. Oh. Um, if, you're, if you're playing uh, GTA V, they can recommend or pick missions for you to, to run. Oh, that wow. Type. So it is very interesting. Um, it looks like Microsoft is going to tie it into the Xbox Live service. They're, they are rolling the Beam team into the Beam team. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> They're rolling the Beam team into the into the Xbox Live team. So it's going to be coming to Xbox. It'll probably be part of our Xbox Live um, going forward, I would imagine. Okay. Maybe a, a couple of year, a year or two, um, once they get it fully integrated. Um, and Microsoft announced that... Uh, Minecraft is going to be a big part. Um, oh, definitely. Which Minecraft definitely fits into that 
that type of uh, interactivity, that, that social interaction. Mm. And uh, an upcoming game called uh, Sea of Thieves. Oh, yeah, all, yeah, that rare game. Yep, is, is also going to be something that they're going to integrate with uh, Beam, like, uh, right off the bat. So I'm interested... Oh, I'm interested to see what that is. That that seems very interesting. Uh, is is one thing to chat with your with your um, viewers. Mm. It's, it's certainly another thing for your viewer to say, "Hey, look, I bet you can't play this round of uh, Call of Duty using two handguns or, or whatever they want to send you." That, that that's very interesting. Yeah, um, that's very interesting, and I'm curious as to how they're gonna implement this into games that aren't first party. Um. That's true. I, I don't know. Yeah, the, so that's going to be very interesting to see because while it would be cool to have like some kind of integration into like Call of Duty or or like okay, I'm going to send you a loadout, you know, get because yeah, that just sounds that sounds crazy. And you know what? It's sad because there was a game that that was canceled that probably would have been perfect for this service, and that was that new uh, Fable game. Oh yeah, yeah. Because of how the game was structured, you had the four players, and then you had the monster. I feel like the, your chat could have like controlled what the monster does, like or like you know manipulated his AI, or you know, or done something you know with the with the world layout or something. I feel like that would have been a perfect idea for for this service. Yeah, that that actually yeah yeah definitely. Um, yeah, so so that's that's kind of sad, but yeah, this is only really going to apply for people that already have big audiences, and they're going to be hoping that these guys jump over because if you have a small audience, it's not really going to help you much to stream on this service unless there's some kind of like Twitch integration or something, which I doubt uh, Twitch is going to be down for. But it, it it all depends on how they how they do it. Right. It, yeah, it definitely dep depends on implementation. I mean, if they implement it natively into the game and you can still stream on Twitch, that would be nice. Then I, yeah, I think that I think that'll work. That that'll work. But if it's if it's uh, if you if you gotta lay layer it over the top of your game, um, I, I don't see how you can get it and get Twitch involved as well. I, yeah. I mean, you you just have two video layers going on. That that can be a bit. I'm sure it can be done. You're right, uh, but it, it'd be a bit complicated. And yeah, maybe a bit and much. I, I, I doubt. Well, I, I think that it'll be a bad idea for them to directly go into competition with Twitch because even YouTube gaming isn't really competing with oh, with no. Twitch. Yeah, there, there, this is nowhere on that level. Right, right. Yeah. So Google tried to buy Twitch. Amazon beat them to it, so they launched YouTube gaming. But yeah, I I, I think Twitch is by far the industry leader when it comes. To oh the yeah, industry. yeah, it's it's the standard for for streaming. They've been doing this for years, even back with uh. Do you remember Justin TV? Yep. Justin TV. Yeah. So just Justin TV, that, yeah. you know, so they've been at this for a while, and I I really think that they have a, a they've created a solid foundation. Yeah. And unless um, you know, Microsoft comes with something just like truly amazing, and people adopt it, because it's it's not gonna be enough for it to just be an amazing service. People that are already established are gonna have to adopt it. Right. So, and if they don't, then it's it's um, and if it does, if they don't adopt it, and they are in direct competition with Twitch, it's gonna die. Right. Well, the the only the one thing I will say Xbox has a leg up in is if they integrate it very deeply with Xbox Live, mm. where like. For instance, if you got hundreds of friends, or even um, right oh, now, true. right now, if you if you uh, go to Xbox Live, they do have featured. Uh, you can go to a oh, game. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you pick a game, say Destiny, and it'll say it'll show you featured streamers, featured Twitch streamers. Right. Or if, they, if they replace that with this service, you know, feature live streamers, Xbox featured Xbox Live streamers. And it's right on. It's right on the. It's right on the face of the uh, game page. So you know when you go into the game, it's right on the face of the page. They they may they may be able to um, make some headway, but yeah, I can't imagine them absolutely replacing Twitch. And yeah, I, there's not. I mean, there are games. There are going to be plenty of games that are really good for this, but there are also going to be games that are horrible for this. So yeah, so yeah, I'm actually I'm actually very curious as to how this is going to turn out. Um, it's going to be a while before it actually gets um, gets going, but um, we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, they do something where you can kind of like, where it's kind of just integrated into what you're already doing. Because I, I truly doubt that anybody that's like got like millions of viewers or 
you know, followers, subscribers, and with the new cheer system, they're getting like multiple cheers. It's right. like I doubt that they that person is gonna want to abandon Twitch for this. For right. So. And then it, there's also the, the also, there's also the thing of monetizing. So yeah. Be, so like, are they gonna are they gonna allow people to monetize? Right. Are they gonna have problems with licensed music? Right. You know, lot, lots of questions. Um, when you when you mention like, okay, we're doing a new streaming service, a lot of questions are being raised. So. Well, well, it's definitely an interesting topic, and I, I can't wait to see how it plays out. Right. So, uh, knowing Microsoft, we won't we won't see anything about about this for another year or so. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, when yeah, we'll wait and see, and <laughs> we'll report on it when we have more news. But um, we're gonna go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes, <laughs> the meat and potatoes of this uh, of this podcast, and uh, it, it's dealing with Nintendo again. And this time, uh, we're going to be talking about how they're, they've been putting an end to very high-profile fan games. Um, these are games that have been in development for years. And, you know, at launch or, you know, once the game like, gets enough attention, these, um, these small, you know, developers, they get, you know, takedown notices or notices or notifications from lawyers saying, like, hey, you need to stop what you're doing. And it kind of just puts... You know the people that were going along with this game for the amount of years that 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 um, you know there's been a development in a place where it was like wow I've been following this game for a while now it's gone what do I do I hate I hate Nintendo and so it, it brings up that uh, argument but um there's three games um, that I want to talk about today um one of which is a Pokemon mod and it was called Pokemon Uranium. And if you look at it, um, a lot of the assets seem to come from the Pokemon. I think it was, oh God, not X and Y, but the one before that. I think a black and white too. Um, though that is where some of the sprites come from and the, uh, God, what is it called? Like the environments and stuff. But this guy actually created his own Pokemon. Like, you know, you have unique Pokemon, um, in the game. I haven't actually played it yet, but when it was, uh, launched, these guys like pretty much immediately received notifications from lawyers saying like, "Hey, what you're doing is wrong. Stop what you're doing." And of course, the the website was forced to um, stop hosting the link. Um, and they basically put out a message saying like, "Hey, don't hate Nintendo for this. You know, we knew what we were doing. We knew what we were in store for. But you know, the the project is essentially uh, over." Right. And with all the hype. And, you know, conversations about Pokemon right now, I personally feel like this does nothing but just promote the brand. You know, it gets people, you know, engaged in, you know, the games and, you know, with po the next one, uh, Sun and Moon not coming out until November, I think it's a perfect placeholder for, you know, you're just waiting for, for, for that one. But uh, that's, that's just my opinion. Uh, what what do you think, Boogie? Um, I I believe Nintendo has every right to defend their intellectual properties. Oh yeah. Um, okay. I, I I believe when you start doing things like this, um, the problem becomes if you have a bad experience, it tarnishes your brand. And when your this brand is, is when your brand is tarnished, remember these are publicly traded companies. When your brand is tarnished. Your value is tarnished. Your shareholders are not happy, and it causes major problems. Hmm. So that that's the first thing I was I was stepping into. And I understand it's these fan games. These people they are very passionate about the things they love. Very very passionate. They they you know it, the, the the Pokemon Uranium the the team yeah. that, that developed that they I'm I'm hundred percent sure they had no ill will. There was no malicious intent. They didn't try to monetize. No, nope, definitely not. I, I understand that, but yet, these companies absolutely have to protect their IPs. And if you reach out to them and say, "Hey, we're developing a fan game," and they say, "Don't do it," don't do it. Don't well, waste yeah. your time. Um, if if you just release a fan game knowing that it's a known um, IP, a uh, Pokemon, Metroid, Mario's. Um, I mean, there's the list goes on about Zelda. Mm -hmm. I mean, the list goes on about all of the games 
that that people have tried to remake, fans have tried to remake, and um, it's gotten taken down. Um, yeah, is just don't don't do it. I, I I know you're passionate. I mean, if he would have named this game something else, if he name if he would have named this game Mon Pokey. <laughs> he might he might have been able to get away with it. Um, <laughs> Just but, the fact that he wanted to, you know, bank or not necessarily bank, but get the actual name out there. Right. So again, he has fair use rights. If he wants to make something based off of the game, people do it all the time. You see knockoffs on everything, knockoff yeah. movies, knockoff shoes, knockoff whatever. You can do that. And people you don't mention IP. Just say this game is a monster, monster catching game, monster training game, and people will play it, and you'll know yeah. what it is. You'll know what it is. I'll know what it is. The, per- the developers will know what it is. But once you start reaching into the IPs, you can't. You, yeah. you really, really can't. You can't. I don't know, but then it also brings up the the conversation where, you know, when the co- the game companies adopt these these um you know, these communities, these modding, these hacking communities, and they adopt them, you get really cool things. Like, right. that. that is the success story that is uh, Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania? Um, because... That, um, what's the Valve game? Um, there, there's... Oh, God, I'm picking. What's up? The Valve... What, Valve game? Portal? No. Um, heck, Dota. Dota, okay. That, that's not Valve. That's uh, that, but that was ba- that was based off a mod for War- World of Warcraft three, right? And, and now they got a what a twenty million dollar tournament going on. Yeah, if, if if it's done properly and the IP holder blesses it, that's perfectly fine. But if the IP holder says no, or you don't, contact- well, a lot a lot of a lot of the time these guys don't necessarily ask for permission initially. They kind of just go about it. And then, you know, okay, well, they haven't said anything, so let's just continue. And normally, when they get canceled, it's because they they have gained a lot of attention. You know, they've gained the attention of Nintendo. Yo, we are aware of this. And I don't know. That's not necessarily true, because there's plenty that get shut down that don't have attention. Oh, true, true. it's, It's, again, a company is in their best interest to protect their IPs. Yeah. There, there's no, there's no, absolutely zero reason for a company to say, okay, we're going to let you release this game with our IP and we had nothing to do with it. They lose, they, they lose control that way. Yeah. And when they lose control, they, there's more to lose, much more. There's bigger things to lose for them. I think if you're a fan and you want to make a tribute game, um, you do it one of two ways. You got to pitch it to them. Yeah, you pitch it to them. And if they they turn you down, you can you make got, it. You gotta you gotta revamp it. You gotta yeah. make it your own thing. Make it yes, right. Make it your own thing. You can't use any of the IP stuff. Change. I mean, you can make slight changes. You can look close to it, and it may come after you. If you're not monetizing it, they really don't have anything to do. If you can right. you can uh, call it a parody or what have you. If if you are monetizing it and it's very very close, um, explicitly, um. You, you can explicitly tell mm-hmm. what the source content is, you have a problem. Yeah. But if you're not monetizing it um, and you, you push it as maybe a parody, um, you, you push it as a likeness, you, a lot of times you may be able to push it, you know, yeah. slip by with it. Um, I, 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 per- I personally think the Pokemon Uranium, mm-hmm. it was different enough with all of his own original content, his own original levels. Well, I mean, they did have like Pokemon that were actually from other games in this game as well. So, right. so, but they had enough original content. If you pull out those those IP Pokemon, it had enough of its own originality to actually pass off as its own type of game. Yeah, I mean, you change a little of the gameplay, change the name, and you you are fine. And people can people most people would. Uh, especially most Pokemon fans, well, just they, adopt it and you yeah. know just play it just because it's it's, it's cool. Like yeah. yeah, and they and they will understand that it, it was it was a uh, nod to the the proper the proper IP, but uh, you, you just can't go out and release stuff. I mean, that's the same that's the same as if you know you you just go get a Run DMC song, uh, wrap it over across a Beethoven background. It's still Run DMC song. Yeah, you can't you can't do that. Yeah, not allowed. 
Okay. Well, let's 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 just talk about uh, the two uh, the other two games I have on the list here for a second. Uh, Project uh, AM Two R, which was a remake of Metroid Two. Um, which was a Game Boy game, and it kind of just like updated the graphics, um, played more, um, you know, it had a quicker um, pace, and I actually have played this game, and this game is fun as hell. This game is fun as hell, because it, it plays um, a lot faster, kind of like the, the Game Boy Advance games, and, um, you know, of course, once, it, uh, once they released their latest version, you know, Nintendo promptly uh, shut them down, so luckily I was able to uh, to pick it up because it, it's hard to find the link. <laughs> it's hard to find that link, man. They, they, they are going after these guys. Um, but again, you know, we can make the same argument that it was, you know, and this this right here was like pretty much a a remake of an already existing game. Right. So there's 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 a fan game where it's like, you OK, this is like a, a, a unique story or, you know, my own take or my own spin on this franchise, the way I see it. And then there's remakes, you know, and you know, who knows? Nintendo may have wanted to do this themselves. So I can understand why, you know, shutting, shutting it down was in their best interest. But again, it's just, it's just a really cool thing that's out there. And, and, you know, I, I, I don't have any ill will towards Nintendo for protecting their intellectual properties. But at the same time, I feel like, these fan games, these tribute games, only pay homage to what these um, creators have created, and they want to not only preserve the you know the nostalgia, you know, because most of these games are you know for classic titles that they that Nintendo hasn't touched in years. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, well, not not Pokemon or, or well, the the next game Zelda, but Samus but hasn't had Samus, a, yeah, hasn't yeah, had anything, hasn't since had what, anything in a long since time. Since the Wii, right? The like first or second year of the Wii, maybe. Um, did they have? I don't I think. Uh, no, yeah, the, the the Wii had some games. I do not think there was a Wii U. No, there was not a Wii U Metroid game. Right. The last. So the last they Metroid went a game. whole generation without uh, a Metroid game. Yeah, was it the other M? Right, it's the first. Yeah, other. Oh no, was other M a Wii or Wii U game? I can't remember. But that wasn't really a traditional Metroid game. It was it was it was that, weird. That was, that was the first person shooter one. Um, it was right. no the first person shooters. That was a, a, a trilogy on the original Wii. That was Metroid Prime. Oh yeah. Metroid right. Other M was like a like action platformer game made by <laughs> Team Ninja. It was it was it was weird. I, I I never played it. I thought I wanted to, but then I figured out that like you control everything with just the Wemo. I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Cause, but, um, <laughs> yeah, they, they shut, they shut it down. Uh, and I'm actually going to play through this game because I, I, I did play super Metroid mm-hmm. and a lot of the, cause there, there's a lot of people that, you know, love the Metroid prime series and love super Metroid and haven't really, or may not have played, um, you know Metroid Two because it's a Game Boy game. It's like who who played Metroid Plays on that. the Game Boy? Right. I I didn't, and um I I, I wouldn't have uh, initially, if but yeah, and if you didn't if you didn't have it, then you were just kind of just like asked out. But um the, the well, let's talk about the third game here, and this was like a, a browser based game that was uh basically just paid tribute. It was a tribute game. It was actually in the title. It was called Zelda Thirty Tribute. And um, it was to um, celebrate the 30-year anniversary of Zelda 1 on the NES. And it basically took the entire game and basically changed... It, it made it into like a, like a 3D, like top, like top kind of like isometric like view type game. And um, it extended the map so you could kind of like see where you're going a little bit. And you weren't like closed off to these like, you know, single screens. And it was just it was just a good time, and of course, you know, Nintendo shut it down. But <laughs> I mean, I I understand. You, you can't mess with Zelda. No, yeah, you can't mess with Zelda. Like, that, that's oh, that's a no no. That's that's Miyamoto right there. He he ain't messing around. <laughs> Miyamoto can't mess with Zelda. And I'll, I'll go back. I mean, leave the IPs alone, especially pop, popular IT. If you don't if you don't get the blessing of the the holder. You gotta let it go. the The only thing I would, because um, you, you, <clears throat> you kind of brought it up, how Nintendo kind of uh, 
haven't really done much with Metroid. They they actually have a Metroid game coming up this year. Man, for, Federation yes. Force, man, that is not a Metroid <laughs> game. That is not a Metroid game. Uh, yeah, Metroid that, Prime Federation Force. They should they should they should have just made that its own thing. I feel like putting Metroid in the name and then having absolutely nothing to do with Metroid <laughs> is nonsense. Is yeah. gonna hurt this game more than help right. it. They could have just called this like Federation. Oh, they just like because Federation Force. That's that's an entity within the right. Metroid Prime universe. So this just needed to be something completely different, like Robot Sports Center. I don't know what the hell that game even is. Right. Yeah, I think it's like a competitive, like, sport type game. Yeah, sport ball. Some kind of four player. Yeah, call that Joan mechanical sport ball and get the hell out of here. It is not <laughs> Metroid. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, but, Federation Force. Like, oh, God. That's just. That's, ugh. Yeah, but um, go, going back to my point, what I was going to say is um, I, I don't mind. <sighs> let, let me rephrase because I, I, I hate. Copyright infringement. It, it bothers yeah. me to no end because people feel like they're entitled to, to to somebody's content, somebody's content that they they've worked hard to produce. Whether it's a million, a uh, hundred million dollar Hollywood movie or uh, a six uh, two dollar indie app, it, it doesn't mm. matter. Somebody worked on it, and they they would like to they would like to get some kind of rewards for their hard. They would like to be rewarded, at least compensated for their hard work. Right. For people to go out there and just pirate it, bootleg it, do whatever you want to do with it and feel like you're entitled to it. That's that's just incorrect. But um, w- one thing I will, I, I, I kind of am sympathetic in this is uh, like something that's been abandoned. You know, something that like say, and game that comes to mind is Ghosts and Goblins. Like, okay. Somebody did something like Ghosts and Goblins. Capcom, when has they, when's the last time they did anything with Ghosts and Goblins? What, Nintendo... <laughs> I mean, they had the character. Uh, they had the character in what Marvel's Capcom Three, right? Uh, Arthur, yeah, he was Arthur and yeah. uh, the the little demon guy. They were in Ultimate Marvel's Capcom Three, but as far as an uh, an, uh, an original game, like it's Super Nintendo era, I believe. It says 2010 oh. Ghost and what? Go- Ghost and Goblins Gold Knights. I don't know what the hell that is. Wow, what? I've <laughs> never I've never seen that. Googling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, but if if it's something that's been say more than ten years and nobody's done anything with it, I can I can I can see somebody going back and doing something with it, and not expecting to get in trouble. Um, yeah. Uh, it, it, again, it's still somebody's IP, and if you bring it out, because again, you never know what these companies have in store, right? They always have storyboards and projects, potential projects lined up, so you, you never know. But. Uh, Something like if Pokemon and Zelda, especially right now, Pokemon, you can't touch Pokemon with right. Pokemon Go. Whether you whether you think it's the greatest game ever or it's some kind of side sideshow gimmick, it's still Pokemon Go and it's all over the place. I mean, it's yeah, cool. and and you know this this isn't the first time that they've shut down a Pokemon fan game. There was one um, I remember called Pokemon Online, mm-hmm. and it was basically um, the gold and silver version um, in color before they re released it on the DS. Um, using the graphics from the Game Boy Advance games, and you know it was it was cool. It was still in development, and you know they got they caught wind of it and put the kibosh on kibosh, it. Kibosh, yeah. That, that's yeah. What so do. I can understand it for for a popular series. I mean, I can understand it for any series. I mean, right. se- there was a there was a um, fan game Streets of Rage remake, and I love this game. Um, I've been I was following that game for a little over five years of its development and played like every single version and was keeping track of all the changes and they released version five and poof, Sega was like uh-uh no nope. we're not we're not we're not we're not having it yeah and like Streets of Rage hasn't had anything since the Genesis so you would think like okay well you know these and of course it wasn't being monetized or anything like that so you would think like wow these guys really appreciate up uh, nope Mm-mm. kill it kill it burn yeah, it word it with fire <laughs> because it's an asset sega can sell to somebody else true true but it's like i don't know i feel like when they're not actually using the property kind of like Mega Man. there was actually a fan game that um you know capcom actually gave the blessing to it was a uh, um Mega Man Cross Street Fighter. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a fan game. And then, uh, you know, Capcom just gave the blessing because, it's like, they ain't doing shit with Mega Man. So was, and I think this was before uh, Mega Man 9 and 10. So it kind of just, uh, you know, allowed for people to, to, to play the game. And, you know, they kind of just saw, like, wow, people really want this game. And I, I feel like the success from that led to, you know, Mega Man 9 and 10. Mm-hmm. So there's there's good and bad with with when it comes to fan games. I feel right. like, yeah, they are infringing on you know pro, you know intellectual properties, and you know that's bad and bad for business. But I I am also a firm believer that if people are playing this fan game, that's because they played the original. It's you know no malicious intent or anything. They're not trying to tarnish it. And you know these people put a lot of work into these fan games. Oh, yeah. Pokemon Uranium was being developed for nine years nine years of work that they put in to um pokemon uranium and you know i feel i mean and just like the developers you know they're like we love pokemon we were doing this you know you know as a as a labor of love to the to the you know pokemon community and you know so i don't, I don't know it's 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 you got it. You can't use the IP. I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I just can't get behind it. I'm sorry. I, I really can't. I, I understand. And like, like I said, I, I'm, I'm absolutely positive that none of um, any of the three games that were in the story, um, any of most, I would say most all fan of, games in general. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fan games in general. None of none of the developers have any malicious intent. They just there's something they love and they want to pay homage to it, uh, and they feel you know. They're doing it because they love it, and I, I will say on the side, it's, it's it's another way for them to learn um, game development. I'm sure yeah, there's definitely. a few of them that used it to, to learn um, game development. May may go on to work for a studio, and that that's fine. But w- once you mess with somebody's IP, you, you can't deal with it, and yeah, it, it, that's that's just and I, I just I can't I can't I'm cool. sorry I I can't I I can't be like. Yeah, they're fans, and they didn't mean anything by it. But no, Nintendo should never yeah. let it go. Sega shouldn't let it go. Capcom. Microsoft, Sony, Capcom, none of them. It's their yeah. property. They need to keep it. And again, especially with these companies being public companies, because if they let one go, then then there's going to be well, you yeah, let that one go. Yeah. It's a slippery slope. So yeah, yeah, and they and they have let some go. I mean, there's plenty of uh, Sonic fan games out there. I feel like right. there's a new Sonic fan game every week. <laughs> Right. And, there's and, there's a new one and, and you know and, Sega really isn't doing any anything about it because Sega doesn't know how to make a good Sonic game they're, they're hoping a oh burn de- <laughs> they're hoping that, they're hoping the indie developer gives them a good idea <laughs> hey I mean and 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 honestly I cannot be happier with the the way that the Sonic community handles fan games because and most times they're not really creating anything you know particularly new um i don't know it's it's hard to explain but they there's there's two types of fan games there's like an actual fan game using a different like engine and everything and then there's a mod of the original source and you know there's 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 both and you know those those guys do excellent work over there and it's why we have cool things like like um you know sonic uh, mania coming out because of all the hard work that these guys have put into you know, learning everything that there is to know about how this game or how this series just works. Like they know how Sonic games work. Right. Like I I remember a few years ago. um, Wow. Like, oh, damn. Was it 10 years ago? It was I think it was for Sonic's. Was it the 10 or I think it was the 10 or 15 year anniversary. There was a Game Boy Advance game release called Sonic Genesis. It was basically a remake of Sonic 1 for the Game Boy Advance. And it was terrible. (laughs) It was terrible. Like somewhere down the line, you know, the people that were still working at Sega and Sonic Team just lost or forgot the the original source code. Didn't know how to manipulate it. (laughs) Couldn't get it. Couldn't. They forgot how to Sonic. (laughs) And that game came out. 
terrible. If you ever just look up gameplay for Sonic Genesis on the Game Boy Advance, it is the worst thing that you've ever seen. And the Game Boy Advance, like that little handheld, was probably like 10 times more powerful than the Genesis was back mm -hmm. in the day. And it couldn't handle the sound. The sound was terrible. The camera was like too far zoomed in. It was like, how am I even supposed to see the level layout when like it's it it was it was terrible and I can't remember if it was one of these guys I think Stealth, um, the guy in charge of uh, Head Cannon Studios that's working on Sonic Media he he did Sonic on the Game Boy Advance and it was awesome <laughs> it was awesome so these guys know how to Sonic and they you know in terms of the two uh, D games and I think just after so many years Sega just they realized it. They was like, yo, these guys are good. Let's put them to work. And I think that's the, that's the ultimate, you know, the, 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 the best outcome for any fan game maker out there. You know, number one, you definitely got to go about it the right way, man. You got to right. pitch, pitch your ideas. And, you know, if you get the blessing, great. If not, then just, just, just forget about it, man. Forget yeah. about it. And whatever you do, don't try to monetize. Yeah, yeah, definitely don't try to monetize. I haven't seen any fan game that has been, um, you know, sold commercially. Uh, there, there but have. Go ahead. That not even sold commercially. If you if you host in the game on your page, don't have don't have ads on the host page. Don't have oh, ads linking. To, don't have anything that indicates that you're getting money from your fan game. Oh, if, that, that, that's that's something if you're, different if, entirely right there yeah if you if you go to the download link and when i go to your download link of your your sonic fan game or your mario fan game and you've got 50 ads on there that's mo that's monetizing their content that's a problem that's a big okay. problem that's a, okay that's uh you living on the streets because you got sued out your pants problem yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh just and just um to to clarify um None of these games, as far as I've read, have received any kind of like cease and desist orders from Nintendo. Yeah, um, yeah they weren't given any cease and desist they got uh, takedown notices. Yeah, they got just got takedown notices. Yeah. Take so, notices, yeah. so yeah, they didn't they didn't make them cease and desist. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, yeah, and yeah, just go about it the right way. Don't monetize and, you know, pitch it to the companies. I mean, because 12 times out of 10, they're going to say no. But, I mean, it'll be that one time that they say yeah, they say, then yeah. you'll get a Sonic Mania or a Mega Man Cross Street Fighter, and it'll be freaking awesome. Yeah, just just go through the proper channels and, and make sure you, you cover yourself because we don't want to see anybody in trouble. That's for sure. No, de definitely and, not. Definitely and, not. Like you said earlier, some of these fan games are, are top notch great games. It's mm -hmm. just that I think you should just probably just stay away from Nintendo. All three of these games were Nintendo games. <laughs> maybe yeah, she maybe you guys should just stay away from them. They Well they the, are... the, Nintendo's crazy aggressive. They've always been super aggressive True. with what they did. I mean, they were taking down YouTube videos, um, mm -hmm. come um, play with me YouTube videos yeah. for playing with um for streaming uh Nintendo uh showing Nintendo games. So Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that that would that was the issue with all the way up until like maybe a yeah, year, and, two years yeah, ago, just Nintendo, recently. Yeah, Nintendo is a is a, a very um, old school um, game company. They Look, they are still in the '90s as far as like how they how they you know think about certain uh, aspects of the gaming scene as it is right now. Because you you know it's not just about you know picking up a cartridge, popping in the system, and playing. You got you got streamers, mm -hmm. and you got you know, let's players. You got you know a whole separate industry based around gaming Games, and it's yeah. it's freaking crazy and nintendo has not fully grasped that concept yet i mean they, they don't care because yeah. nintendo is nintendo I, and i'll tell you nintendo's stance on uh on their content anywhere that they don't like it or want it uh, and to to uh to quote the great kanye west and jay-z <laughs> they go ham <laughs> yeah, they they go ham. I mean, they they've even gone as far as to take stuff out of future games because of what happened in the previous. Uh, yeah. The example I'm talking about is Smash Brothers. Uh, they had the the story mode, the subspace emissary, and brawl, and then they noticed that like, oh, the whole game is on YouTube. We're not doing a story mode no more. <laughs> and then Smash Four did not have a story mode, and that was I was I was kind of sad, but yeah, that was the reason. 
that's <laughs> Nintendo. And that's Nintendo. And so I, as long as I can remember, Nintendo has been really, really overprotect. All the oh, way yeah. back to so um funny story. You remember and this is again, this is gonna date me. Nintendo okay. the NES, eight bit system. Mm-hmm. Remember Tengen? Tengen. It sounds familiar. What remind so, me? Atari had two. So Atari, remember Atari? Atari. Yeah, yeah. They had hardware. They had the twenty six hundred around Nintendo's around the Nintendo, any the NES. They had the Atari fifty two hundred. Right. That was right. just that was going out. Um, they had been working on the seventy eight hundred, but in between they were just they're trying to make games for Nintendo. Right. And Nintendo had a hard fast rule that you could only produce five games a year you can only publish what? five games a year yeah that was their rule. oh that's crazy a publisher can only publish five games a year but if you think about it well back then they there was like an oversaturation of games that, and they had just came out of the video game crash th- exactly so that was so I, I can i can understand yeah. i can understand that for that time period so what tension did so nintendo had a chip a hard encryption that um allowed your game to play on nintendo right so, so tension they went and uh, they filed a they filed a law brief saying um, they needed the schematics for the encryption chip for Nintendo so they can get their games to work and the, they got it released and what they did is they reverse engineered and <laughs> basically created their own chip so they can beat the, they can beat the console encryption beat the system <laughs> and they, they just started releasing games like crazy they released a Tetris they released a Pac Man. Um, I, I remember those two specifically because I had those. And mm. the, the funny thing is, those Tengen games, because they were not actually licensed games, they weren't like they, they weren't the gray cartridges like Nintendo. They, they were black cartridges with gold labels, and it had like oh. a slight to the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Tengen or Atari was flooding Nintendo with all kinds of offshoot games. Yeah. Uh, of course, Nintendo sued their pants off. Right. And they also sued them for releasing Tetris because they didn't have the right to do that either. Oh yeah, that's a separate <laughs> story. Tetris is a is a is a mysterious little little beast. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have a conversation about that another time though. But uh, yeah, yeah, Nintendo has always been strict, and I I feel like they're the only ones that are still doing it the way they're doing it. You know, yeah. Sega they definitely let up because they were you know claiming claiming videos. Mm-hmm. Taking down videos, putting strikes on YouTube channels for for having cutscenes or music from their games. They they were they were relentless. I don't and, see Sega's not a video game company like they were before. Yeah, I mean, and, I, I I guess, but I, I see them more as a like a holding company as opposed to an active uh, video game company. Because uh, uh, when yeah. have they act? When was the last time they actually they Sega? actually develop a game as opposed to licensing out to a studio to develop and just slapping their name on it. Oh, well, yeah. I, I think Sonic and Sonic Team... Um, don't they have a sports game? Ooh, Sega? Total, total... And they have, like, a Conquest game, like Total War or something like that? I don't know who develops that. Let me yes. see. I'm pretty sure Sega doesn't have any in-house developers. They might, but... Yeah, but, I, yeah, you're you're right. Yeah, you're you're right. They they basically are a publisher. Um, right. I, I, actual... I, don't think, I don't even think they're a publisher. I will, I call they're a holding company. So what they're doing is they hold their IPs. Uh, well, no, they they acquire studios. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, Total War is a Sega game, or yeah, it's a Sega game as of two thousand five. Okay. And it's being uh, developed by um, a company called the Creative Assembly. Is that a Sega and, studio? Uh, yes, they were acquired by Sega in two thousand five. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they they basically either acquire um, certain studios or like make deals with certain studios like Platinum Games to make the Bayonetta series, or you know what what have you, and well, you know that's that's how they get their this this studio, mm-hmm. huh? That's interesting. This Total War series studio, Creative mm-hmm. Assembly. You know a game yeah. they're developing. Right now, what's that? Halo Wars Two. Mm, that's okay. interesting. Yeah, very. Because I know Total War. That's an RTS game, right? Yeah. So yeah, and Halo Wars Two is an RTS. So that. Hmm. Wow, makes sense. That makes me want to want to look at Halo Two now. Halo Wars Two, I should say. Yeah, I'm not really into RTS, but yeah, that's 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 pretty cool. 
Maybe we'll see the Sega logo on the back of the game. That'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be tight. That'd be awesome. <laughs> but yeah. So that's gonna that's gonna be it for this week, guys. We hope you enjoyed uh, our comments and you know commentary on the news from the week. Um, all links will be on our Facebook page. You can definitely catch us there. Um, the replay of this will, or I guess the, the archive of this will be up on our YouTube channel. Um, any any final thoughts? Um, no, not well. One uh, just a follow up. I did a what two weeks ago now. I did the unboxing of the Microsoft yes. One S, and I do have an update on that. Um, during the unboxing, I mentioned that you had the opportunity to get the free Connect adapter. Yes. Um, because the Xbox One S does not have a da- uh, Connect adapter port. Um, happy to say, when I came back from my little trip, I had my Connect adapter sitting at inside the house for me it was boxed up i got it right here it's this guy right here if you can see it put in my face yeah that's yep. it and it's basically uh it's the connect adapter that they release for windows it's the one that you use if you want to connect your um connect or connect uh put a connect on your pc mm-hmm. it's that same adapter um so that's cool again it was free um you just the one thing you have to you have to go to the support page to ask for it, um, but you right. must make sure when you make your request. I made my request via chat, via the online chat. But with a representative. Yes, you have to. You have to speak to a representative. It's no automated way to do it. You can call or you can do chat. I did chat um, because I, at the time I think I was editing my uh, my video. Actually. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so while I was doing that, I was doing a chat as well. But um, you know, you got to make sure that you're new Xbox One S and your original Xbox One are on your Xbox Live accounts, registered on your Xbox yeah, Live account. And once, once they see that, they verify, they ship it out to you. Um, didn't cost me a penny. That's kind of cool. Yeah, that, that's very cool because uh, I don't know how much um, usage you're going to get out of the Connect anymore. <laughs> I, me, me personally, uh, any, anybody. a ton of usage because I'm lazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just talking about besides as a multimedia device, I really don't see you getting much usage out of it. So having to pay for the adapter seems a little like ridiculous. And it's 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 a very good thing that they're releasing it for free. But all that information is actually in the video for the unboxing. So definitely check us out on YouTube. Uh, That is there. Uh, Also on YouTube, we're going to be trying to supplement uh, the content. Um, I did an unboxing for the Loot Crate from last month. It was really, really fun. Um, so, yeah, definitely look out for more videos from uh, the both of us. Yep. And uh, we really hope you guys enjoyed us uh, this week. And um, we're going to get up out of here, and we'll see you next week for more news. Peace. Peace. <laughs>